Hello everyone, it's Aries. So before we begin, I highly recommend you submit these codes inside of the Warrior Cats Ultimate Edition game to receive exclusive items. These codes are 400M likes, standing for 400 million likes to the game, and 2M likes, standing for 2 million likes to the TikTok videos. Congrats to the Warrior Cats Ultimate Edition team for that achievement. Something I've been longing to do for quite some time is remake some of my more popular videos. This being my Warrior Cats role-playing tip series, in which this is where we began. The quality of some of my older videos is absolutely dreadful, and I apologize to all of you for making you suffer through that. We're going to start with a simple video today, simply reviewing some of the most basic role-playing tips I can give you and further adding onto the list with newer rules and guidelines I highly suggest you go by when role-playing, or to at least keep in mind. To start us off, we have our first and probably most basic rule, which is to refrain from being overpowered or OP. So what that means, or to define it more clearly, is that you basically act like you're the most powerful cat, or you're just unkillable. You're not. You are killable unless you're specifically doing a power magic roleplay and are told, Hey buddy, you can be immortal. Just don't do it. It generally just makes the role plays not fun, and I typically dislike people who do this, mainly because it just draws the attention from everyone else and lays it onto one person. Of course, if you have like a dark forest cat, that's a different story. However, having like an immortal living cat, that's that's a little bit of a problem. Um, the second one is to stay out of people's business, especially if you're a spectator. One of my largest pet peeves is when a spectator is like following me around and not like just watching from the sides like generally just trying to be a part of the role play without actually role playing like they're very visible they're like in every screenshot and they're just talking to us like oh that's cool oh and it's just it kind of like gets on my nerves so if you are going to spectate at least like try to hide yourself or make yourself hardly visible during your role play though you do not know what river clan is doing you do not know if they're dying of green cough unless they come and tell you don't go pulling a dove wing and running to the med and like, we need to help River Clan grab all the grab all the herbs. This can also be considered metagaming. Just stay in your general roleplay and don't include people who aren't in your roleplay. Just stay with your little group. Number three is to main your role. If you are a deputy, be a deputy and send out patrols, take care of the clan. You can step out as, as leader if your leader is away or off duty, but you are not the leader. As a leader, you're expected to maintain the clan. Don't be off in your own world. Medicine cats need to heal people. Kits can't be hunting. Apprentices cannot leave camp without a mentor. Keep to your roles. Do not go doing random nonsense. Like, if you're a leader, you cannot be just focusing on one little group of people you have to focus on the entire clan that's the responsibility that comes with the leadership role um so our fourth one is to make sure you can differentiate between role play and out of role play and whenever your character is talking i personally use brackets parentheses um hashtags or just squiggly lines for whenever i'm doing a role play response and quotation marks whenever i'm talking or like the special quotation marks you see some people using. Um, for uh, out of roleplay, I use like slash slash parentheses. I don't know what they're called, but like there's slash lines. I'll show them on the screen. But that's what I use out of roleplay. I either put them at the start of my message or at the end. And then our fifth rule is that detail is key. So let me give an example here. A leaping stone fell from the cliff and broke his leg. That is an absolutely lame roleplay response. Here is a better example whenever you're roleplaying something like that. Leaping Stone's pelt was hit with the crystal-like rain grazing his fur, the rocks below him growing slippier by the minute. His claws outstretched to grip the stone, but it was a moment too late before he plunged down the rock and shrieked to Starkland in fear. Landing down, he heard a sharp crack in his back leg and his gaze faltered, growing blurry. If a roleplay is too long for a Roblox chat box, just put parentheses con or continued behind it so people know there is more to expect before they add on. For number six is to have a good character. Give your character a personality and make them unique. Don't make a flat, boring, everyday character. Nobody would like to roleplay with that. 
Give them depth and create general story to follow your character that other role players can unlock. It makes role play so, so much more fun and interactive overall. Trust me, you will see that the difference between your role play with having an actual character to base off of and not having a character at all, there's a giant difference. You will find it so much more interactive and fun. And seeing your friends' reactions to your character's story is probably the best thing ever. Me personally, whenever I roleplay with friends, they always get super excited whenever they unlock character storyline that they didn't know before because they were paying attention to the roleplay. Including that in your character's roleplay will enhance you and every other roleplayer's time because they can unlock stuff and it just makes it more interactive and fun. So this was a little longer and more in-depth with our rules, but I hope it provided the needed information and it was an improvement from our last video. Word Cats didn't recently come out with a Christmas update, so make sure to check it out if you can. Elsewise, this is Arcarius signing off. Have a good one, folks, and I hope you enjoyed my little absence while it lasted.